Hey, it's Tom from Texas and it's time for another floppy deep dive and today is an exciting day because we are going to be drawing our winner of the Win Tom's Retro Poster Contest and we got quite a few entries in and I've got all the entry names here in this coffee cup, my Pirates coffee cup and I'm going to be drawing out the name to see who's going to win it. I'm going to ship this poster anywhere in the world so I want to wish everyone who participated good luck and thank you so much for participating in the contest I appreciate you uh, playing along and taking the time to watch those videos and find the keywords and we're going to be doing this kind of stuff uh, again where you can win different things uh, if you do want to get one of these posters and not do the contest you can always check out my patreon page there's one of the levels on there where you get a retro poster but this is the contest listen for the keywords Everyone turned in there's like I said everyone's name in here and I'm just gonna draw it straight out of here and share it with you guys before we get into the video for this week so let's go ahead and do that I meant to do this last week but kind of got delayed a little bit that last my last video about Qbert took a little bit longer than I expected it to take and unfortunately I didn't get a chance to draw I was hoping to do this last week but better late than never but I just want to make sure that everyone's excited again you get to choose whoever's name you get to choose from the Pirates poster or you get to choose over here from the Maniac Mansion or over there from the Bruce Lee poster so you got three different options again I'm going to ship it to anywhere and I'll stop delaying it drum roll please and the winner of the retro poster I'm trying to just get I just got the name rope on here. And the winner is David Fox. So David Fox, you are the winner. I don't know if you can see that it's so tiny on here. But you have won my retro poster. So thank you to everybody. Thank you to David Fox for playing and to everybody else who played. And now let's go ahead and get into this week's video. And this video is sponsored by PCBWay. When you're needing a PCB board, either small, medium, large, and different colors, exactly how you're needing it, PCB Way is the place to go. And I love it for when I'm using my retro computers and I need that. I like to jump over to the projects page on the computers and USBs and look at all the different things that people did on the projects dealing with the Commodore 64. From doing the Commodore 64 PLA replacement to doing joystick joy pads when you're doing retro gaming to doing a keyboard. They have so many cool different projects that you can make using using their PCB way boards and I love it for all my retro computer and computer gaming needs. So check out PCB way. So for this week's video, we're going to be doing another of what's on that floppy. And on this what's on this floppy, we're going to be checking out uh, seven or eight different games, maybe a utility here or there and just checking out and seeing what's all on there. If this is your first time checking out my channel. What I'm doing is I'm going through all my cases of floppies that I collected as a kid and playing them for the first time in 30 years. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to load up the both sides of this floppy because of course I used the notcher back in the day I always had to use both sides and fill it up and check out what's on here could be some good ones could be some bad ones you never know and that's the fun part about it so go ahead and pull up a chair grab a joystick and let's get started so the first one we're going to deep dive into is wavy navy and wavy navy came out in 1983 84 both for the Commodore 64 and the Atari. And we're going to look at the Atari version too. We're going to do a little something different this time around and what's on that floppy. And if I have the game for another system, check it out so you can see the little bit of different uh, variations of the game. But here in Wavy Navy, I liked it. It's very Galaxian uh, kind of set up at the top where the ships dive in at you but it's you know you're at the bottom and you gotta dodge all this stuff and each level gets a little bit harder and these airplanes are you know doing basically dive bombing you trying to take you out 
and each level gets a little bit harder. So when you move on to the second level, you got stuff going on like mines will be in the water. So now you got to avoid the mines at the bottom while you're also fighting these different planes and helicopters. So, so let's go ahead and take a look at a little bit of the gameplay and just see how it, it, it plays out. But this one's a fun one. If you never played it before, you need to download this game no matter what system you want to check it out on. Uh, because it is definitely worth playing and it's a fun one. It's definitely the arcade based fix shooter that I love when you used to go to the arcade games and play and this one reminds me a lot of it. So let's go ahead and check out some of the gameplay. So on this third level there are these bomb dropping jets that are flying by that's just a line of bombs that you gotta fit right in the middle in the between the two bombs to get past it or you can blow it up so it'll stop dropping bombs but it was very tough and then the next level it'll add back the mind along with the dropping of these bombs so it just gets like I said harder and harder but it's so fun trying to dodge all this stuff while shooting and and keeping that you know just trying to stay alive so love this one let's check it out on the Atari and show you what it looks like on there so here it is on the Atari 800 XL and as you can see it looks very similar to the Commodore 64 different color changes for sure on this one and it got a little wider screen because the Commodore 64 had the border around it where the Atari 800 XL didn't have the border but as for the gameplay itself it feels exactly the same to me uh, being able to use the same joysticks and being able to you know shoot and the levels are exactly the same so the biggest thing here is just how it looks um, I like the Commodore 64 one, but that's just because I'm a Commodore 64 guy. But this Atari one, uh, I, I enjoyed playing it too. This is one of those games when you start playing, it's hard to stop. Uh, even though I was done and had plenty of video already, I just kept playing it because it's just so easy. If you watch my other videos, I just enjoy games where I can pick up the joystick and start playing. And you just know what you're doing. And it's not a lot of having to figure out what keys or buttons does what and does this. And it's just the good old arcade feel of it all. So just wanted to show you what the Atari looked like versus the Commodore 64. So you might ask yourself, Tom, what about the Apple IIe? Or wasn't it originally put out on the Apple II? Well, yes it was. It originally came out on the Apple II, and I do have that as a matter of fact. Here's a little bit of the gameplay of the Apple II. I love the explosions in this version. Uh, this looks really cool, the, how the reds explode when you're shooting. but. Apple II is actually really fun. Couldn't get my joystick to work with it right, and the joystick's always a little ishy, uh, iffy when you're using the Apple II, if you ever had an Apple II. Keyboard worked just fine, but for some reason this one, my uh, controller just didn't work that great. So anyway, that's everything. You've seen all three versions of Wavy Navy. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Next we're going to be looking at a game called Druid and Druid's a hack and slash dungeon crawl game that was came out in 1986 for the Atari and for the Commodore 64 and it was also ported over to the ZX Spectrum and the Amstrad and we're going to be looking at three of them we'll look at this one the Commodore one that's on this floppy I'll also show you the ZX Spectrum one and I'll also show you the Atari version and this game was inspired by the arcade game Gauntlet, as you can obviously tell if you ever played Gauntlet before. And you're a druid, and you, your whole idea is you got to rid the world of the Dark Mage. Uh, Akamanter is his name, and his army of demons. And so you have to travel through a bunch of different levels to do this. And the first level you're seeing here is just normal landscapes. And then the ones after that are underground. Each one gets deeper and deeper. 
and each level has various enemies out there such as ghosts and insects and witches and four demon princesses and you could shoot them you got these different things you could shoot them with you can shoot them with water you could shoot them with fire or you could shoot them with electricity and you only have so much of it so you could collect the, while you're walking around uh, the different treasure chests that have this in there to gather you could also have a chaos spell that destroys all the enemies in your vicinity and as well as replenish your energy and then you could also have a golem and the cool thing about it on the atari and the commodore a second person could take control of golem using the second port so looked really really good on the commodore 64 uh, enjoyed playing this one i remember playing it as a kid and just having a blast i give this one two thumbs up really enjoyed drew it i was a huge fan of gauntlet as a kid in the arcade so when i got this one i was like oh this is cool in fact i don't know if it might be even better than the gauntlet we have on commodore 64 i have to replay that again but this one had a blast playing it so now let's go ahead and look at the different systems that it also came on so now we're going to look at the ZX Spectrum version of this game and it's set up the exact same way layout wise on the map. As you can see the difference here obviously is just the graphics wise of course because of the ZX Spectrum. But it actually plays really well and it looks really good too I thought. For this system uh, it, was, it was really fun on here too. I uh, had no problems with the ZX Spectrum. Thought this could you know uh, how they put it together even though everything's black you know as the character and the monsters and so forth but they did a really good job porting it to this system and it played really well everything else is similar just trying to figure out the keys on the keyboard was my biggest thing to make it work but just wanted to show a little bit different versions out there and this is the ZX Spectrum version so just let's look at a little bit of the gameplay So next we're going to look at the Atari 800XL version of this game and show you a little gameplay of me just messing around. But here's the close-up version of the Atari and it looked really good too but then this flashing started and I don't know if that's just this version that I got is a bad version of Druid. If you have the original Druid on the Atari 800XL I'd love to hear if it's always flashed like that or is it just my version but that drove me nuts i would not play this version if that truly is the case because that just really just distracts from the whole thing and it looked really good i thought the commodore 64 looked better but until it started flashing at me i thought oh i only could take so much of that but it's set up just like all the other two games we looked at it's just like there's gets too much stuff on the screen and then it just starts flashing so i hope it's just a bad version and i could pick up a different one somewhere what this one on this floppy it just looked drove me nuts so let's go ahead and move on to the next game so next we're going to be looking at a game called breakthrough and it came out 86 87 around that time and this was released on the Amstrad and the ZX Spectrum and the NES and, and of course the Commodore 64. And what Breakthrough is, it's a 2D side-scrolling vehicle shooting game. And, and, and your mission here is you race, jump, and blast your way through five levels. I could not get past the mountain level. But there's also a bridge, a plains, a city, and an airfield. And... I was not very good at this game and I did not do very well of it, you know, trying to show you it getting very far, even with the trainer, because the trainer just gives you unlimited lives, but it didn't help me much else. You know, the biggest thing with this is when you want that joystick that also could do the jumping instead of hitting the space bar. And I need one of those joysticks, you know, I just have it where, it, where people could set it up where you could program one of the buttons to be the space bar. 
that's what I need because this game would benefit a lot from it because reaching over and doing the space bar I almost wanted to just put the keyboard down on the floor and use my toe to push the space bar since it just interfered with it and I just could only get so far of it and it kind of reminds me of it kind of looks beachheadish you know kind of graphics right over Moscow type type of graphics um, where you're going a little bit of moon patrol built in and maybe a little racing deconstruction set too with the car but just didn't really enjoy this I'd give it a C um, I just thought it was just an average game and like I said it was pretty difficult I, I never did get to the second level but I only had so much time to play I had to go on and record the next video but that's breakthrough So I did mention that Breakthrough was also on the ZX Spectrum, so do I have that game for there? Well, absolutely. So let's check out and see if there's any difference in Breakthrough on the ZX Spectrum than there is the Commodore 64. And again, my biggest complaint is that I got to reach over, and there's not much of a space bar on a ZX Spectrum if you've never used one before. It's actually very tiny in the far right corner is the space bar. So when you're playing this and you got to reach over and hit the space bar, it's even harder than the Commodore 64 because you got to find it. And then you got to hit the space so you can jump over the rocks. And I didn't do much better on this than I did the Commodore 64. I just wanted to give it a quick play to see if it was any easier. And it's not. Um, Again, it's got that ZX Spectrum look, which I find very, very cool. I know some people would say, oh, it's not as good graphics-wise, but I just I just like the uniqueness of it. So this one's still tough. I still say Breakthrough is just a C, but I thought, huh, since I know it's out there and I know I have it, might as well give it a shot and show you guys what it looks like here. So here's a little bit of the ZX Spectrum. So next we're going to look at a really cool bowling game by Access Software. It came out in 1986 and it's called 10th Frame. And up to 8 players can bowl in this in a bowling tournament. And this game was released of course on the Commodore but it was also released on the Amstrad, the Atari ST, uh, IBM PC compatibles, the MSX and also the ZX Spectrum. And the lane is viewed from behind the bowler, so you're kind of looking towards the pins with kind of a little bit of a 3D perspective. And the scorecard's uh, displayed right above the lane. And you can move the player left and right of the lane when you start. And, and you run up by holding the fire button. And a target cursor can be moved by pushing it left or right. And you kind of want to get to control the speed and the hook. And it's similar to leaderboard, the, the golf game where you can control the speed of the shot is how hot, long you hold down the button. And then a small zone at the top determines if you make an error or you exaggerate the spin or whatever the case might be. And when the meter starts to descend on the right, it's you got to stop it in the hook zone to determine how much hook or spin is on it. And so it's it it's you can screw it up real easily. I played on the kids level, so it didn't it wasn't too hard on me. But I really like this. I give it I give it an A. Uh, I thought that Access Software did great when it came to sports like golf, and then of course this one here with the tenth frame. I really enjoyed it. I played the whole you know I played. Uh, all 10 frames when I was playing this to make this video and I won't show you all that but really enjoyed it thought it was a blast and this one's a good one if you've never played the 10th frame bowling they did a really good job back in the day and it, it really is fun to bowl on this 10th frame so I mentioned that it was on the ZX Spectrum and do I have gameplay of that well of course I do so here's the 10th frame on the ZX Spectrum 
and how it looks compared to the Commodore 64. I found this one to be a little bit harder controlling the ball. For some reason, uh, even on kids mode, I wasn't bowling strikes. I was all over the place. Um, I just obviously first time ever playing it on the ZX Spectrum and it controls are the same everything you can control the guy back and forth and you can control you know where they are going in the different angles and the speed and the hook but uh, just a little bit different but I wanted to share it with you guys so let's check out a little bit of the play of the 10th frame before we wrap up this session of what's on that floppy So that's it guys that's everything that was on this floppy i hope you enjoyed this edition of what's on that floppy if you haven't subscribed yet please do so please give thumbs up if you like the video love to hear your comments about any of these games memories thoughts anything like that uh, don't forget you can join up the patreon page and become one of the vips here on floppy deep dive and until next time thank you for joining me on another floppy deep dive yeah! <laughs>